the fair winds blow Our home is where the waters flow We'll show you what we've come to know On board while sailing wisdom So our next stop is going to be Gilligan's Island. We're going to meet up with the people from Bums on a Boat. So that'll be fun. here at night actually blow out to sea and they're really nice and calm and everything's gentle so we leave with those winds but then as the day goes on the wind comes back and it comes back with strength so we have full sail in the beginning and then we just reef down as the day progresses we are coming in for a landing the winds and the weather is just so intense out here. We have three reefs and our staysail up, and we're just we're just going all, almost out of control. It's crazy, but we're we're holding tight. We're holding on, and we're coming into Wanika. We're really excited because we're going to be meeting some fellow YouTuber friends. Bums on a boat are currently anchored just where we're headed, off of Gilligan's Island. Today we've got something exciting in store. We're gonna go tour Bums on a Boat's boat. Mate with Bums on a Boat, Joel and Michael and Lola, and we're really excited to introduce them to you. Well, we have to thank our patron Warren. He's actually a patron of both of our channels. And Jerry, and Jerry, Jerry Titus. It was their idea that we uh, meet up. Tell us about your boat. It's a 1974 Carter 33. It was built to be an offshore racer. And so a cruiser it's- Cruiser racer kind of a cruiser racer. It's not really a liveaboard boat, but we've made it work. It was more made for a six person crew to race across an ocean and just basically sleep and go up in the helm. And we're living on it. How long have you been doing your YouTube channel? Going on five years. Joel and his brother Tony and friend Jared started the channel. Um, and the first episode is of them buying this boat. Yep, when it all started, we didn't really have a big vision and it shows because the channel went all over the place. And we lost my brother and Jared, um, you know, after like 12 episodes. That sounds like they died. We lost them, we lost them to see, yes, yeah, so it was a sad day. No, they just decided boat life was not for them anymore. And that was after we sailed to Cuba. So how many miles have you logged and uh, what were you doing in the Dominican Republic? It's going to be around 3,000 miles. And we were in Luperon, Dominican Republic. We actually hauled our boat out of the water and we were working on it for one year. But it was a cheap place to live, a cheap place to haul the boat out. And when we started, we had no money. So we're like, that sounds great. And we never, Joel hadn't hauled the boat out. So that's like, that's a good point. So we never hauled our boat out. We did not get our boat surveyed. We just bought a boat in the water and we did a couple things and just took off. Did you find a lot wrong with it? More than you thought? Yeah. Yeah, we didn't know what we were getting into at all. We were just gonna do a bottom job, yeah. paint the bottom. That was it. Mm -hmm. And we cracked our keel. We found structural in damage in, inside of the boat where mm -hmm. it had run aground. We redid the um, cockpit. We took our, our rudder off and redid mm -hmm. the rudder. Yeah, a lot of stuff. I mean, we have a diesel engine and that has proven to be really difficult. You guys have an electric motor and you sail a lot. 
we have been relying on that engine because we're going into the wind. Yeah, that's a like really difficult course that you guys have <laughs> chosen. Yeah. 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 The thorny path. Yeah, that's the thorny path like, for a reason, right? That's like why our goal is to get to Grenada. Yeah. And once we're there, we're done sailing upwind. That's it. We got a couple options from Grenada. Yeah. It'll make sailing downwind so much more like enjoyable for you because you will have known <laughs> the but the trials happened. and tribulations. Yeah, I really yeah. think what you guys did is awesome. <laughs> Going right. way out and down and around and now you're coming back. We did what nice we had way. to do. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Our boat can't go upwind, so <laughs> I really That's feel like we're is. hanging out with a salty crew here. So, <laughs> just hearing a couple stories last night, mm -hmm. and seeing the boat, just yeah. uh, well, we'll we're about to take you on a on a real tour of the boat. And before we do that, I wanna I would love a tour of this boat inside and out. So here we are in the quarter berth. Yep, quarter berth has turned into our storage, and. Um, this is heat which we use for our alcohol stove. We also use denatured alcohol. This is the nav station and we store our laptops in here and just odds and ends. Is this um, where you do most of your video editing? This is the video editing station, yes. <laughs> we got our paper charts. We use Navionics but we always like to see it on the paper chart and in case anything happens we can come down here and do our dead reckoning. That's cool because we're we exactly the that. same. Like we only use Navionics and paper charts. <laughs> nice. Yeah. Um, living on a boat is uh, wow. like a live game of Tetris. <laughs> so there's our old uh, Volvo Penta MD2030. We have done a lot of work on her to keep her going. We really didn't know a lot about boats or mechanical or um, in anything really. And so we had to learn how to be diesel mechanics. And it's been a, it's been tough. I gotta say, I really respect those guys that do this for a living, that work on engines. Uh, battery charger is also a game changer. That's um, connect. So when we hook up to shore power, that that'll charge our batteries. This Victron Energy um, gives us good information. How many amps are coming in? We have 200 watts of solar, which isn't a lot, um, but we also only use two six volt Trojan batteries for our house bank. So it's a very small house bank and we have- 250 amp hours. Yeah, 250 uh, amp hours total. Very basic, you know, we really only run a refrigerator and DC outlets. We don't, we don't have a lot of power drop really. Our refrigerator, it's a cool blue Technotics uh, compressor, which draws about three amps. We have the same stove that Hermie and Maddie have, which is the Origo. So before this stove, we were using propane. We actually had a big old propane canister in the boat and everybody was like, don't do that, you're gonna die. And we felt the same, but it was the best option we had <laughs> at the time. So now we're so happy to have non-pressurized alcohol as a cooking source. Okay, so you might notice we have this ugly duct tape here in the boat. What are we doing with that? Um, what this does is it keeps the boat about 15 degrees cooler uh, and that's everything so we're okay that it doesn't look great and we're <laughs> in the process of making curtains so it's going to look they're going to button on and it's going to look beautiful so this actually this space back here is made to to be a bunk so normally there's a person here um the original boat says this sleeps six people and they're saying someone sleeps here someone sleeps in here and the same on both sides we've used it you can see it's completely um, full is our storage. So this was a gift. Okay, this is probably one of the biggest game changers on the boat um, because it's a rechargeable battery and this is just a wet dry vac and we have a dog on the boat. Nice. And so you have to vacuum. So this like this has changed Michael's life and oh, it's God. made all of our lives so much like, happier. You'll notice the same battery pack as the oh. flashlight. So like, we're actually gifted tools as well like power tools that are amazing but these two are the things that we use like every day. We removed the table from this boat. So we don't have a table, but what we do have is a space that is perfect for doing yoga. And that oh, is nice. essential for my quality of life on this boat. When COVID hit, um, I spent six weeks on this boat without touching shore, but I did yoga almost every single day. And this yoga mat in particular is amazing. 
It's yogatheory.com. And we can also provide you with a 15% discount code if you would like, and that is bums on a boat. This is a um, this is a cooler, a backpack cooler, um, but to try to maximize space, we use it as our laundry bin. Huh. And this is also just our storage, um, our fell weather gear. We have a wet head. Um, it's not my favorite thing ever, but it works. And one thing that has made boat life way better is getting a pressurized shower. We have the same exact thing. Do you actually? Yeah. This was a gift. The V-Birth is where we sleep. It's our comfy spot. It's actually where Lola hangs out when we're on the longer passages. One of us is sleeping here and we're with Lola. She's comfortable. We got a couple fishing poles. We're trying to dabble with fishing. <laughs> we're um, we're still learning. We really want to be li it's a cheap, living it's, off fish. It's a steep curve. It's a st uh, you guys. We're are really you, bad fishermen. You're bad fishermen. Really bad. Okay. Well, it's kind good. of a running joke on our channel. Oh god. <laughs> like yeah. how bad we are. <laughs> At least you try though. It sounds like. Yeah. If they know you're we'll bad. Try. Yeah. That's so. what makes it worse is that we actually try and we suck so hard. <laughs> <laughs> Alright, so we're riding it out here on Anchor and we have the Mantis, which is the same Anchor that Herbie and Maddie are using. And we both are raving about the Mantis. We love the Mantis. And also, we had a question about our leak cloths here. The purpose is mainly for privacy. This anchorage, we don't really need the privacy. We're out in the middle of nowhere with a couple neighbors. But when you're in busy anchorages or marinas, privacy is hard to find sometimes. So. And girls like to walk around naked on boats. We were... Inside the boat, mostly. <laughs> well, that the lead cloth is so they can walk around naked outside the boat. So. So we're all trying to fight the current.
Okay, we've got the bums on a boat on our boat today. And Michael and I have something very important in common. Both of our men really need haircuts. So, what we're gonna do is make this a little interesting. We're gonna trade boys and we're gonna cut each other's significant other's hair. But that's not all. <laughs> What's the other part? No, that's all. Okay. I'm just, I'm just so filling in. Some... I'm just filling in what other people might have been thinking at that point right yeah. there. <laughs> when you said we're gonna trade boys. We're gonna trade. We're gonna trade boys for a week. Let's <laughs> see how it goes. Okay. So, so what do you see? What do you want for your your man, child, person? I want him to be comfortable, and I think that's like the reason we go short pretty much everywhere. But the so top. like mohawk, <laughs> like spiky mohawk. Ooh. I'm thinking spiky mohawk. Maybe. I'm thinking dark eyeliner. We we have done that before. <laughs> okay. Okay. So short, really short, short on the side. Really short mm -hmm. on the side. We gotta just like do a couple inches on top and just kind of okay. leave that. You know, I like to see it blowing in the wind, though. You know what I mean? It's like All right. Not so we'll use like a, a four or a six on the top. Great. We'll uh, leave that blowing length. Look at this. You look like a greasy used car salesman. What is this? <laughs> this is totally a greasy used car salesman that's not gonna sell any cars. Someone commented that. On As one in of our somebody last used videos. you. And you became a car salesman. Yeah, that could be. That could definitely be. <laughs> All right, these are my tools. Now you may think that I would be really good at this because I'm an artist, but the truth is I'm a two-dimensional artist, and uh, I've never really been very skilled in the three-dimensional arts. So um, we're gonna see how it works out. And the good news is Michael can always fix it if I mess up, but I think that uh, Joel is a very brave soul for letting me do this, and I'm ready. <laughs> it's not a joke. <laughs> I have this if this helps Okay, too. I don't know. Yeah, it probably will. But first I'm just gonna get this hair. Tell me if I'm like pulling. It's Michael, so right? So this is yeah, how I do it, right? I go up. <laughs> Against the grain of the hair. Against works. the grain, okay. We're just going in. Oh my god. It looks great. <laughs> have, have you ever used clippers before? Once. On a... Uh, Herbie. On Herbie, okay. One time, okay. One time. That's good. It's better than no times. I have to keep my mouth closed because the hair's not like going in my mouth. Yeah, there's, oh. there's a lot. There's a lot of hair. There's yeah. a lot of wind. Wouldn't it be hilarious if I just left the sideburn? Well, <laughs> it would be super hilarious. long. <laughs> It's not easy around the ears. Really? Yeah. No, it's not. Ooh. Tell me if I'm hurting your ear. You have like a really stiff ear. Stiff ear and... You know what they say about stiff ears. <laughs> I know what your viewers might be thinking, which is... Are we seriously watching these, <laughs> these guys cut each other's hair? <laughs> the answer is yes. The answer is that is a sailing channel thing. And honestly, it's a big part of sailboat life. Did because you guys cut sailing good, bad, and ugly's hair? Unfortunately, no. I oh. did, we didn't get to cut his hair, but... I mean, that's not like a thing you guys just do with other channels. <laughs> it's not, but what it is, is it's a thing they do all the time. Oh, I'm mm. sorry, I gotta talk quieter. Um, you know, Kristen is cutting Matt's hair. I would say at least every three episodes. Oh, wow. Yeah. It's, it's a Matt haircut. Let's go, baby. It's going. Just, just do it. She oh. has no hesitation. I love oh, it. Oh, <laughs> she doesn't even care what I'm gonna look it's like. It's true. I oh. think that's why it's great that we're swapping. <laughs> oh no, it's gone. It's Bam! gone. There you go. That's for you. Joel, grab it. Ah. Take it. Oh, whoa, really? <laughs> yeah. It's like I, a little I mouse. feel like we need to put this in like a little baggie. <laughs> we can put it in a top knot and we can like top knot like our conch. 
No. Or, or a top knot something on the boat and give it a top knot. There is no scenario that you can come up with where I will keep What if we top knotted that? Lola? Goodbye, hair. Did you just smell it? Yes. She totally, <laughs> she's so confident and she's having so much fun. I am. I really, it, it gives me. Yeah. Um, the word is confidence. confidence. Peace of mind. Peace of mind, but it gives me confidence. I can just like feel Maddie's confidence. I can feel I really like how, how excited like she is. I actually think here. she's having fun. It kind of looks like a like weird punk like. <laughs> you know what it reminds me of is Anthony Kiedis. Ooh, I don't know who that is. Do you know, do you know who <laughs> Anthony know who Kiedis is? is? If you try to. Michael actually left during the haircut and came back. I had to go back. get some provisions. Ah. So what do you think of well, Joel? Yeah, my first impression is that yes, he is rocking the Anthony Cadis look, which <laughs> I am so down with. Yeah, I think he looks great. Awesome. You said it was a punk rock boy ah. band vibe and... Yep, that's what I was going for. I couldn't agree more. <laughs> Um, Are you ready to like sing in Backstreet Boys? Like, I think that's where your career is headed. I feel lighter and this is different and yes, I, I am. I'm ready. Actually, I, I want to sing like Red Hot Chili Peppers style. Alright. Am perfect. I, is Backstreet Boys the same as Red Hot Chili Peppers? Not at all. Because mm -mm. I'm, I'm, I'm hoping I'm going more for the Red Hot Chili Pepper and for less sure. for the Backstreet Boys. For sure. <laughs> Definitely. They were just the first boy band that came cooler. to my brain. <laughs> so now, now it's Herbie's turn. Let's get it on. Let's get this mop. Mm tamed. Hey Charlie. What was the first haircut that you gave him like? Well, it was what he wanted and so it wasn't anything that I actually liked. I think that if you go short on the sides, but just not too short, mm. like just do like a, a, a three Like the second something. shortest guard? Yeah, on the sides. Yeah. And then like a little blend, and you can leave it a little long on the top, but not like, not like crazy long. Okay, so about. But you know, just use yeah. your artistic okay. intelligence and your aesthetic eye, mm. and decide what you think my husband would look best with, and then execute it flawlessly. I've got it. Excellent. No conté las horas, tu es mi vida y eso es toda mi aurora Lo que quiero es amor, nada de compasión, no, no, no lo sé si tú lo ves Que te quiero pero no lo ves, yeah Hola, quiero que tú sepas que te quise amar Pero la inmadurez me la jugó, baby eso no lo quería Oh, it looks really good. You look like an Abercrombie model, man. So now it's your turn to vote in the comments which is the better haircut. Now you're not voting on who has the better haircut, it's who did the better haircut. So Michael did my haircut and Maddie did Joel's haircut. So let us know. So don't be judging on looks now because obviously yeah. Herbie's the better looking guy right now. But we're judging on before and after photos, I yeah. think, right? Yeah, who took like the biggest mop into the best haircut? Yeah, exactly. about having a YouTube channel is how much it connects you to other people and in this case other YouTube channels so meeting bums on a boat uh, Michael and Joel was just an absolute pleasure we really hope that you guys 
uh, go over and subscribe to their channel because they're the real deal. They're just real authentic people documenting their life adventures and choices on their little 33 foot sailboat. They're such a nice, genuine couple and it's been so much fun hanging out with them and getting to know them more and I just know that we're going to be friends for a long time. Anchors up, sails are up, we're on the Parguera. So we're currently coming in through the Enrique Pass and this is like super special for me because when I was a kid... We have arrived at our anchorage in Parguera and Herbie's dropping the sails and the anchor. Maddie's gonna just relax here and I'm gonna go explore these reefs from my childhood. Thanks for watching this episode of Sailing Wisdom. Don't forget to like the video, share it with your friends, and hit subscribe so you don't miss the next Rigging Doctor episode. And if you're interested in even more Rigging Doctor awesomeness, consider becoming a patron to see all of our extras. Can't wait to see you next time as you join us out here on the high seas.